Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be the gift of hard times. So I've got an email success story from a guy who's been following my work since 2015. He got laid off on his job, found a new job, and then two months later he ended up getting fired because he didn't jive with his boss. But then it took him a whole year to find another job. And so obviously he went through a hell of a time going on lots of interviews, it didn't get anywhere, and he was able to maintain his relationship with his girlfriend through this whole process, even though they did struggle a bit. So I know probably 90% of the people when they come to me, because people don't start following my work because everything's going great in their life, usually they've got some kind of challenge. So I thought this would be a great email for those of you that are in the dark night of the soul, if you're going through the shadow of the valley of death and life feels hopeless. Here's an email from a guy who has just come out through on the other side, stronger, happier, more excited than ever. So this should inspire you. So I got a quote that I wrote and then we'll go through his email. The quote says, one of our six human needs is certainty. We need to know that we have a roof over our heads, can pay our bills, get what we want in life, etc. However, when we don't have certainty about our future, we often will compromise our values and goals and settle for something that is less than ideal in order to gain some, gain some sense of certainty and comfort. Success in life, sometimes in life, you have to do things you hate for a period of time until you can create the conditions that enable you to do what you love. Just like a minimum wage entry level job should only be a temporary stepping stone in a long career instead of a permanent destination, you should never stop working on your side hustle when you are forced to temporarily do something you hate until you can do what you love. Otherwise, settling for mediocrity will become a way of life and permanent condition instead of a temporary stop on your long life journey. In other words, the average person just, they want to get back to where they feel comfortable and safe again and they can pay their bills, but that over writing need to have some comfort and some security often at least when it comes to the average person that you're going to encounter in life cause them just to stay there and try to hold on to what they got instead of it's great to hold on to what you got but you got to dedicate time to yourself and your side hustle and where you really want to be 10 15 20 years down the road so when you're not working for other people earning a paycheck you're doing something to educate yourself, to develop your skills, to develop your talents, so you can grow your knowledge and your expertise in your talent stack, if you will, to borrow a term from Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert. Because the large, more things you have in your talent stack, the more you have the ability to add value to other companies and customers of companies, or maybe your own company, through some kind of product or service. With that said, let's go through his email. Hey, Corey, my name is Bob from Canada. Not really Bob, of course, but I always use Bob. What about Bob, anyways? I apologize for the lengthy email, but I think this can be used as a life lesson. I first picked up your work in 2015 after I was laid off and was desperately single. After following your advice and reinforcing the pickup and dating skills that I knew was effective, I found a great girl. Good for you, dude. It's your fucking birthright to have a great girl in your life. Some of you share the same goals and values. And after searching and networking, I found another job at a telecommunications company. But, it's always a but. That was short-lived after I was let go from my job after two months. I wasn't getting along with the person that I reported to. I was given no time to learn my job. And after being disrespected, I was sent hacking. I was floored. How can they do this to me? Don't you know who I am? I was floored, but I thought I'm going to find a job in a couple of months. Well, life is what happens to us when we're busy making other plans. That's where the infinite patience comes in. That you've got to find a way to grind it out, to continually take action, even when it feels hopeless. Think about it. You think you're going to find a job in two months, and six months later you're going, what the fuck? When am I going to find a job? My unemployment's going to run out. That's not a fun place to be. Months went by and I thought, I'll find something soon. 
you got to be optimistic and you got to believe that things are going to turn around sooner rather than later. And it really becomes an exercise in willpower when it doesn't turn around sooner rather than later. Because you can quit, you can give up, or you can keep grinding. And as the great Ray Lewis said, grinding is my rest. And then my unemployment insurance ran out. My savings were gone, my severance was used up, and I had no solid leads in a crappy economy. I don't know what country he lives in, he didn't say. I told my girlfriend who lost it on me as she told me I needed to worry. Because think about it from this perspective, women want to feel safe and comfortable in a relationship with you as the leader. So in other words, she's basically saying, I don't feel safe and comfortable and this scares the crap out of me because I want you to figure it out. And Corey, it's not in me to worry about life. It's counterproductive and it doesn't fix your problems. Exactly, that's why it's so important to be so busy taking action you don't have time to worry. If you're in a place right now in life and you feel worried and fearful about the future, the best cure for that is taking action. And when you get, whether you're banging the phones or sending your resumes out and following up with them, like I talk about in the video newsletter I did several years ago, how to get any job you want, you gotta have a system. You gotta systematize looking for another job. Because it's just simply a matter of time. Because think about it, people get fired, they quit, they get promoted, companies expand. You just never know. And if you're persistent, you're communicating to those potential employers that you're different than 99.999% of everybody else that just emails or mails a resume in and waits for the phone to ring. Somebody that's aggressive, that's a go-getter, somebody... Because think about it, every employer wants low maintenance employees, people that make them look good, that don't need any management, may need a little bit of leadership, but other than that, they're self-starters and they just handle shit. Those are the kinds of people you want coming to work for you. And those kinds of people typically are the ones that call week out, you know, month after month and follow up because they really want to work at your company and they're waiting around till something opens up. Or at the very least, following up with the top companies they want to work for because they don't want to settle for something mediocre. And they'll remember your persistence, they'll like that. Because if you're persistent with getting a job there, you're going to be persistent in taking care of their customers. Something to think about. I had to ask my family for financial support and I felt so awful. It's kind of hard to feel like a man when, when you got a girlfriend and you're asking your family to help you out. When you're a grown-ass man and you can't even support yourself, life feels like it will never get better. Dude, trust me, I know. It wasn't fun sleeping on my dad's couch after having had a company with 40 employees, grossing seven million a year, making half a million a year net myself, and I'm fucking waiting tables for 10 months. Like, oh, ugh, ugh. I'd get the odd job interview once a month, but it went nowhere because the market is so competitive and I lacked the procurement experience. It felt equally shitty when I networked like crazy and all people said was, apply online, we have nothing available, or the popular, no response. Definitely can be demoralizing. And even that crappy job that I had waiting tables in a sports bar took me, I think it was like two, three months from the time I first went in there until the time a job opened up because it was the only place I really wanted to work. So I was willing to wait. And what he liked about when he finally hired me, he was like, man, you're persistent. I did a great job, of course. I fucking hated every second of it. Oh my God. It was well over a year and I cried because my life was going nowhere and even though my girlfriend hung by my side, Life just felt like it wasn't worth living. Well, give your girlfriend a hug and a kiss from me and tell her how awesome she is because she stuck by you through all that. I had to take up temping, doing construction jobs, cleaning, and carrying goods. You adapted, you improvised, you overcame, and you compensated. You found a way, not a way out. Because it's easy to give up. It felt so degrading, especially when I was doing this for a minimum wage. Dude, I feel your pain, I've been there done that got the t-shirt multiple times it sucks ass but sometimes you, you know you got to do shit you hate in order to do what you love eventually but i remember what you said in one of your videos eventually you will get there through time and repetition 
That's true. It's the fundamentals. That's what a coach, a coach's subject is the fundamentals. I mean, think about, you think about professional athletes. How many of them, their first year out after they get drafted out of college, just crush it? Just, you're just balling out. Very few of them. And how many of them go undrafted and then after two or three years it just clicks? And then they get a huge contract after their rookie deal is up. Not everybody blooms right away. Those that really want it, they eventually find a way, not a way out. And I couldn't let down all my friends and family who supported me. I worked through the pain, but knowing someday I get there and I received a call for an interview, but I didn't get the job until I called a buddy at the company who talked to his colleague, got me another interview, and I got hired. Your greatest resource is your resourcefulness. Instead of getting beat down, you thought to yourself, what's good about this? How can I learn from this? What are my resources? What other options do I have? You know what? I know that guy, Bob, who works there. Let me give him a call. Hey, Bob, I had an interview last week. I haven't heard back. Anything you can do? Oh, I'll put in a good word for you, man. And it goes to, hey, you just need to interview Bob because he's a great guy and you really should have him, have him back for another interview. Sometimes that's all it takes. I was so happy that it was everything that I wanted. Please use my newsletter to let your viewers know that even when life feels like a constant train wreck, that if you keep pushing, you will find what you are looking for. It does say in the Bible, if you seek, you will find. I believe that's where it says that, right? I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Have a plan, write down your goals, pray, network, and do what you can every day, even if it seems pointless. Life happens when you move, stagnation happens when you die. Panache Desai said that. Very powerful quote. The gift of going through hard times is it determines what you're made of. It makes you stronger and makes you appreciate all the small things in life. Yeah, the only reason I get to live in this beautiful place in the beach is because I didn't fucking quit. I didn't give up. And man, I sure felt like it a lot of the time. And it went on and on and on for years and years and years. And you get to read about that in my second book, which will be released soon. Thank you, Corey, for your support. And now I move forward in my job and on to my next challenge, determining if my girlfriend of two years, who is uncertain about kids, is the one for me. God bless you, bald-headed motherfucker. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for the great email. And for those of you that haven't read the book yet, go to my website, subscribe to the email newsletter. You'll get a link in your email that you click on that and confirm it. And when you click that link, it'll take you right to the members area where you can start reading. And then once you see its value, then you can buy a Kindle or an iBook version or a paperback version. You can also get the audio version for free by subscribing to audible.com. They have a free trial. And my book can be the first book that you get for free. You got nothing to lose. And for those of you that would like to get my help personally with some kind of personal or professional challenge you may be having so I can help you achieve your outcomes, whatever they may be, go to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen and book whatever coaching option works for you. And I will talk to you soon.